This one's about Mike Ballard. He was the team manager for Foundation Toy Machine. He was also the staff photographer for DC. If you know this famous photo of Danny Wade jumping out of the helicopter, he coordinated that whole thing. I think he says in the video that it only cost 20 grand. Look at that. That's like helicopter to get all that done was, I mean, that would be like a million dollar project right now. He was also the editor of Skateboard Magazine. He also had multiple covers for Big Brother, Skateboarder, and other magazines. Uh, a lot of famous photos that you'll see in this. When I met Ballard, it was around 2000. I was interning at Big Brother. I showed Rick Kosick a bunch of photos. He was like, nah. So I walked him across the street, kind of nervous, into Skateboarder, where Ballard was the photo editor. So I hand him all these photos. He picks out two. He's like, okay, cool. We're going to use these. So he gives me this film, and I couldn't believe it. It was like a stack of film about this big and I walk outside and I like call my friends like oh my god I got all this film and they took two of my photos I was so I was so excited in 2000 there was no digital it was only film so to get all that film was a lot of money maybe I don't know be like a thousand bucks right now one of the photos that he used was this Donger Ollie photo. So this day, we're going to Bakersfield. As you can see, everybody's in the van. Andy, Dan, Lucas, like they're all piled back there. And I thought, oh, it's a good chance just to like ask Ballard questions because Ballard's coming out to shoot with us because he's making another book. Oh, he's also did the skate book. And now he's working on another book, skateboarding. So he's coming out with us to shoot for the day. What a good opportunity just to ask him a bunch of questions. I'm so glad that you brought up the photo of Simon Woodstock because I didn't even... How did that even come back? You didn't know that? You're no. a bad friend. I know. So Simon used to, I would, me and Simon were pretty tight buddies. He would just call me, he would just, every once in a while, he'd be like, when are you coming up? When are you coming up? And I'd be like, oh, I'll be up there in two weekends or whatever. And I'd go up there and he would have all this shit made, like a toilet skateboard. He carved that one board out of wood. Yeah. Just a piece of like firewood. But no, just, I remember seeing that one. It broke instantly. We only got the picture of him like faking carving it. He really did walk so Braille could run. Like, he literally did all the weird board shapes, and then, like, ten years later, Braille was like, this is good clickbait. Yeah, that's for, how about the heroin board, the, the miniature skim board? Like, oh, the, uh, Eggzilla. Yeah. I seen it that, uh, two nights ago, and it's so fun. It has, uh, the concave on the sides, too. Yeah. He would have all this stuff built, and yeah. I would just go up there, and it, it would just be like, are you freaking kidding me, man? He'd have a whole room full of, like, skim board, like, fish tank, like, every toilet bowl, like, you know. Fish X probably my favorite cover of all time. I love that. He thing. would have been the best YouTuber. He would have fucking everything. Yeah, he was ahead of his time. It was there. pretty interesting that fish tank thing. He had the fish tank done when I got up there, and then I said, "Well, this shot needs a lot of movement in it." So we went and got a full sheet of plywood, and we cut. We put the fish tank in one corner, and then made it to where I could sit on the other parts of the plywood. And then we cut this weird shape out. We put the camera mounted on the plywood and the fish tanks mounted on the plywood uh -huh. on the opposite corners and just enough room for me to ride on it. So the whole thing is actually this big, huge, like the size of this van of plywood. And the, the wood is cut out just where the camera can't see it. So we like traced it out. Like so if we cut all this out, it'll be gone. So you're riding with him? I'm riding with him going down a hill. Do you have pictures of that whole rig? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So this fish tank is sitting on a piece of wood that has trucks under it, and you are also on this piece of yeah. wood riding down the hill yeah. with him. Yeah. Like, so, that alone would be a 15-minute YouTube video that everyone would watch. Like, that's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. It wasn't really going that fast. Doesn't it, matter. It was, if it was moving one mile per hour, that is awesome. Yeah. It's going just fast enough that we're like, I'm like, okay, we, I can eat shit here too, you know? But I would have, I would have never thought that that's what happened in the photo. You see the photo, and I, I hope you're showing the photo right now. It I, just looks like someone just pushing one of the fish tanks. I thought you just put the camera in front of them. That's what I thought. We're right, we're going downhill. Yeah, that's sick. Like maybe you're following them on a skateboard. I didn't think you were. Oh my god! Like I just goes to show you. Movie production. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. It was, he was the sickest because he just stood out so much. And he those the goldfish were biting his ankles. Shut up! He kept going like, ow, ow, and they were like nibbling on him. Uh, and then we took the goldfish out. It was in some video, I don't know what, and we went and dunked the goldfish out in this lake, lake, and he's singing some like Born Free song or something is playing in the background. Then Steve comes and eats all the goldfish. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah, that's I the filmed that too. About. Did you really? Yeah, I filmed that too. <laughs> Recycling the fucking goldfish, that's sick. Where did he live? He lived in like Jacksonville or someplace, Steveville. Yeah. We filmed there, we went there one day. It was just like me, I think in Knoxville and Tremaine. I think that was it. We went there just to go meet up with him. This was when we were first 
meeting him or they're recording him to be on the show. Yeah. And that in that one hour, hour and a half, he swallowed the goldfish and spit it up, and he sorted the worm. The same, I think, at the same location. Was what this for Jackass? Or yeah, was this, this was Big Brother. Yeah, I did all the initial work for Jackass because like yeah. everybody else was employed. Yeah, they yeah, were under yeah. contract. What the fuck? So I did the. I, <laughs> I did, didn't know all that. Yeah, I did the. I did with the the pitch. Yeah. The, and then I filmed the pitch for them. And then me and Spike would walk, walk it around on Hollywood Boulevard with a, this clamshell that played eight millimeter video, not high eight, but before, like the big bulky eight millimeters, uh-huh. the first digital tapes. And we would just show it to people. Spike would show it to people, not film. And that's what went to MTV. So that's was so sick. Was the people going like, oh, fuck, you're doing all this crazy. Dude. So when we went and filmed a bunch of shit that day, that morning, he rode a unicycle into a gator pit. Um, off the roof of this building, like did a gap on a unicycle. I have photos of all this stuff. Too. This is like when he's just getting discovered. Very early. The first time we really, really met him, he flew out to shoot a cover for Big Brother. Caustic was shooting it, and then Jeff Tremaine had me come just to kind of overlook it, you know. Caustic at that time had bricked a few photo shoots in a row. Steve Barrow with a turtle. We had to go do that a couple I don't times. think I remember that cover. It was a beautiful Big Brother cover. Steve O came out. And he was gonna. He was on a stilts and was breathing fire, and uh, the other guy was ollieing off the roof. It was a Big Brother cover. I didn't know that Steve O even had a cover. That's when I, that's when I first met. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Big Brother was so sick. Like just the way that they like kind of meshed all that stuff together. It was super fun because yeah. it was like anything goes. Yep. There was no rules. There was nobody like overseeing it. Like being like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. This is yeah. what Rocco Moore did. And it was just all no holds bar. Like if you're into like any type of voyeurism, photography wise, or just being on like, seeing things happen, yeah. it was fucking unbelievable. I mean, that's what it seemed to be. As Big Brother was, you guys would go out with these wild people, and like, like, well, we're gonna get what we're gonna get. And there's your article. We would go on tours too. Yeah. So, oh yeah, like the uh, hookups tours and stuff. That you guys go. Yeah, and no, we did the Mardi Gras tour. We did. Um, we did a few tours and they were bonkers. Okay. They were just bonk- batshit crazy stuff going on every single day. Like that. Were you working there before you did skateboarder? I didn't work at Big Brother. And during that whole time, I worked at DC. No. So you were a DC worked, photographer. First, yeah, during Big Brother, I worked. I was. Uh, I worked at Tom Yetto, uh, and I was a TM for Foundation. Really? Yeah, and then helped with the toy machine. And helped to facilitate the uh, Welcome to Hell video, so the Rolling Thunder video. I did the Rolling Thunder video, and it helped with the. So early Foundation team manager. So like that's like Chemicals of Destruction around that time that you were. No, right after that, I hired on and started filming Rolling Thunder. Right oh, you Rolling Thunder. Okay. Another one of the covers that I helped with Caustic to shoot was the uh, the Steve Olson Devil cover. He's got a pitchfork in his oh, hand. Oh yeah. Okay, He's like okay. doing a flat ground, probably I think like a heel flip. Wait, no, that's burning, not what I was picturing at all. It's over burning Bibles. Oh, that's I that's remember. intense. So Especially we, for that point in time. When we went on a couple of the road trips we went on, Mark McKee, they used to put Bibles in all the the, the dresser drawers yep. and all the hotels. Yep. And he stole them all. Yeah, we got back to World Industries, or it, it dwindled at the time, and it was uh, McKee's like, what are, you, what are you doing with all these Bibles? Let's convert them all. So I came up Dude. and lit that, you know, and got it all the exposure and everything. Caustic actually, I wouldn't shoot it. They wanted oh, me yeah. to shoot it because I, I drove him up from San Diego. I was a TM yeah. for a foundation at that time. And they're like, yeah, bring, bring Olsen up here and we're going to like fucking shoot cover for him. And we get up there. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, okay, great. Let's go. So I went and picked him up, took him up there. And then we, like, let's shoot this. So we're, we literally just, we'll just walk out to the back of the World Industries building. And then all of a sudden these Bibles come out and they're going to burn it. And I was just like, I was all set up ready to go. I'm like, no. Yeah, like, I got to be a part of that. Here, Caustic, you should do it. <laughs> That's so wild. It seemed like they really were just like sitting in a think tank. and like, okay, well, how can we stir the pot the hardest? Like, what could we possibly do that would be the most jarring? Well, it's pretty similar to just like the YouTube like era right now where you can yeah. just pick up, you know, a, a hand, small amount of equipment or a cell phone and just go outside and do something. Yeah, and, absolutely. But... But there, there was no rules to it. You're not going to get, back then, you weren't getting canceled. You're not going to get demonetized. Yeah, demonetized <laughs> yeah. or canceled. It's also maybe an, an early understanding of, like, right now, everyone's so good at skateboarding that doing, like, the hardest trick doesn't really matter anymore because so many people are doing it. So it's more based around shock value of, like, oh, this person, like, 
skated something that you normally don't think would be skatable and like they were doing like he literally had a cover that we're talking about right now for doing a flat ground heel flip over some something that's like this tall yeah or like simon woodstock's pushing just pushing and that's a cover and i uh, still simon never it. pushed it pushed it <laughs> it wasn't even real. Yeah, his, no, his feet. He, no, no, I, wait, yeah. he stood in it, yeah. put his feet down in there, and then I jumped on the thing and put my foot off the ground, and then we rolled down the hill. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. No trick. No nothing. Anything. Wait. So did you do that so there wouldn't be a blur with his push? Is that why you rode with him? No, I, the, the reason I rode with him is so that the whole shot was blurry. The background separate. was blurry, but he yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Okay, because, yeah, you couldn't do that. Yeah, you couldn't do yeah. that back yeah. in Photoshop. You couldn't make that happen. I was I was trying to figure out, like, why you did that. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. he stayed clear, and the background was blurry. And also, too, remember the thing wasn't going to be stable enough on 215s with those wheels. Yeah. Like, in other words, because by the time you put all the water in it and everything, that thing weighed, you know, probably yeah. 150 pounds, yeah, plus him. Right. And it just wasn't going to work. What about the DC photo, Danny Way jumping out of the helicopter? You still have that, the poster? No, I wish it was on my ceiling for the longest time when I was a kid. That was a fun project. I did that whole project by myself. I mean, I hired people to do certain things. Yeah. I hired Tim Payne to build a ramp. This was a Transworld cover. Transworld cover. This right was mean. a Thrasher cover. It was a cover of Sugar. They made three covers. Danny Harris Stewart showed up. Yeah, and it had six, it. 65 pages of editorial about it. Ooh, 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 wait, so you ch wait your photo no, was my photo. Oh, okay. I was smarter than that. Okay, okay. I knew that if I shot it, it would get like maybe a cover and maybe like twelve pages or whatever. Gotcha. gotcha but if gotcha. I invited, I invited Grant Grant Britton and Dave Swift and Thomas Campbell. So I mean, I produced the whole thing. I found the spot, the location. Got, I got the helicopter just to fly Ken Block and, and Damon Way down to the shoot from Carl's guy because I would drive by this helicopter every day on the way to DC on Palomar Airport. And I just thought, oh, it'd be great to fly them down there. Maybe we could use a helicopter. So I went and just talked to the helicopter guy. He's like, yeah, whatever, 1500 bucks. I'll give you like two hours of time. Fly somebody down there and fly back. And I'd like to throw this in there right now. We just drove past the Goodyear blimp, and he was immediately like, I got to talk to these guys. I got to get in that Goodyear blimp. <laughs> this is something that he just does. He just does stuff like that. We drove past the Goodyear blimp. He was like already scheming on how he was going to involve the Goodyear blimp in some sort of thing. Mm, to, get, to get out, you want to go in the Goodyear blimp? Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to get in there? Yeah, just me and you hold it. I can get oh. in there. That yeah, whole yeah. that whole project, head to toe, top to bottom, everything, helicopter, uh, everything, uh, property rental, ramp, um, life, death insurance, life insurance was twenty eight grand what? for the whole entire thing. That cheap? Why? Wait, why was it so cheap? That's what it cost. So, with inflation, what is that? Like six billion dollars? A lot. <laughs> I think they spent they spent over a million jumping the Great Wall of China. Oh, at least. Yeah, it was over a million. I think. I believe it. And uh, I think Danny said that that project would have cost would cost a million today, for, because there wasn't any production company involved or anything. I did the whole thing. I mean, just materials on the vert ramp alone, or the thing that he lands in, I think would be like. I have all the paperwork on it. I have a little folder. In my whole That's so sick. With the death death signing, there was death releases involved in that. For anybody, I believe it for I, Danny I and for Colin to skate that ramp. It sounds like they didn't really review Danny Way's history that well. Otherwise, they would know that they could charge you a lot more. Well, they, that was all the request of the, oh. the... There was a third owner at D.C. that came in named Clayton. Uh-huh. I forget his last name. Clay, Clay Blimp. And he was the one. And, you know, I give the guy a lot of credit because if it weren't for him... He was a guy that came in and would just be like, you need workman's comp, you need liability insurance, you need all of this stuff. He like, he was a banker. Yeah. So everything had to be by the books. And he really taught me how to, how to do productions and like, so that, you know, you're projected and you're not going to get sued and stuff. Yeah. So I've had to sign a few death releases in my life. I mean, I'm just going to say, if you still have uh, access to what, that death certificate thing. I have, have it. it. I have it. You could sell that on eBay for $28,000 and make your money back. If you have Danny Way's death certificate signed, oh I feel like you could get your money back very easily. I have it. I have it. I have I everything. That. I have all the bills for it and everything. It's just one folder. Yeah, all well, that sounds sick. That sounds yeah, sick. Yeah, I need to go digging around your, uh, your stuff. That sounds but that, awesome. the Him jumping out of the helicopter was like a last minute like afterthought. We were there. He had already done the high 16 and a half foot air or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's like... Uh, He's like, hey, man, I think I can jump out of this thing. Wait, that was spontaneous? It was spontaneous. 
Yeah. So it wasn't planned that anyway was gonna jump out of the. Oh, I thought it. I thought it was planned that he was gonna no, jump it wasn't out. Planned. Really? The helicopter was for the helicopter was the only thing planned with the helicopter was to have it in the shot, or the shot that I shot that oh. had the poster was made out of. What is psych- was to have it back there? Just you're for, kidding me. That was it. I, I thought that was all planned. Yeah, he's just like at the last second. He's like, hey, I think I can drop in off this thing. I talked to the helicopter pilot, and he's like, oh. Yeah, go for it. Just so don't jump. Don't push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't jump. He said, fall yeah. out the sky. Because of a rocket? No, it'll push Ooh. the helicopter oh, down yeah, while yeah. you're trying to jump up. So what happened the first time? He pushed, didn't he? No, the first time. <laughs> no, he didn't. The first time. He went out so far over the coping, he basically went all the way to the flat bottom. He pre-Jake Brown? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Oh, Compressed his spine. And then you got up and tried it again. Yeah, I have the the transfer tape is sitting in my house right now. <laughs> Endless amounts of like interesting, like especially for my generation, like skateboarding history. You guys should come by sometime, and I'll just fucking put it. Yeah, on I'm coming to your house. Deville's not. I'm coming to your house, and I'm filming a video about the stuff that you have. And Deville can watch it when it comes out on my channel. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this video. He still has helicopters. All, right all my archives, my film archives, are all by first name basis. You can just go through it, and you'll be like, "Oh shit, here's this person." And just pull it out. That's so wild. Like, oh, whoa, here's all the '90s shit. Oh, you're all organized. Mm, like yeah, that. it's ready to go. I get calls where somebody wants like whoever Muska photos or Tom Petty photos or something like that, and just like I can just go in and boop, pull it out. That's I'm so just trying silly. to think of my most skate nerdy skate nerd friend that I could bring along with this. People uh, trip when I break that thing up. Oh, I'm I'm tripping and I just know about. It. I haven't even seen it. I'm just hearing that it exists. That's yeah, that's crazy. So sick. Yeah. Just bring pretty... Simon Woodstock. He, he's at his house too. He's in the archives. Just Simon's in a oh, container. His folders he just... <laughs> like. Oh, I bet. Simon's pretty local here. He lives on the backside of these mountains right here. Oh, no, he does. What's his address? Yeah. <laughs> Andy's going. Andy. I was interning at Big Brother when they started Jackass. Like, had me, like, somebody ride me, but I don't know, all kinds of stupid shit. No way. But oh, no. say that whole sentence. <laughs> I was interning, interning at Big Brother. Someone rode you? Somebody, they were like, hey, DeVille, and they had, it was not Steve, it was Chris Pontius, hop on top of me, and I'm like, he's, like, riding me. I don't know, it's just something. Yo. They never even used it. They're on some P. Diddy shit out yeah. there, huh? <laughs> And so, <laughs> but I think maybe that day or another day, I handed him all my photos. I was like, oh, you know, maybe I can get something in Big Brother. And he just hands it back to me. He's like, nah. And so I walk across from Layer Flint's office to Ballard, and I give him these photos. I'm all nervous. Takes the two out. One's a donger photo. And so he takes out the, those photos. He's like, yeah, yeah, we'll use this. He's like, you need some film? I was like, yeah, sure. He gives me about a thousand roll of films. It was from here. It was like that high, you know, a, bricks of black and white and colored film i literally got out of there like shit in my pants like oh call my friends like you, you, you don't know what just happened like but i got all the all, all this film and they, if they took photos i'm gonna be the magazine uh uh dude the free film and being in, in a magazine and like yeah, you know yeah, like this guy shoots get two good photos out of a hundred we better give him a lot of film yeah yeah <laughs> Who's your favorite skater? Mikey Lassick. Is it really? <laughs> what stance is he? What? What stance is he? He's regular. What are you? Regular. Damn it. Man, he's gonna he, fucking. He does the no complies, dude. Best no complies. Yeah, he does. They are pretty slick. Switch gap, backside invert. Eggplant? I don't know. I'm not a vert skater, but I know what looks fucking sick. You're a street skater, you pick the, you just pick the vert skater. Yeah, dude. He's iconic, man. <laughs> Running shit. So if you like that video, here's another one to watch. Honey, what's for breakfast?